This morning I've come looking for the incredible, the delectable Juneberry. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. Now Juneberries have a number of different names from Shadbush to Saskatoon, Serviceberry, and that just starts the massive list of names for what is commonly called the Juneberry. The Latin name is Amelanchier, and the term that we're given for Shadberry or Shadbush comes from the fact that when these were flowering, this was the time period that the shad fish was making its way upstream and spawning, and so it got the name Shadberry. Now these are a wild plant to North America, but they can be grown in many different localities in various different kinds of soils. That's one of the great things about this particular plant. And so you can buy them. This is, this is a wild variety just growing on my property, but you can get them. You can get specific cultivated varieties that have been bred over the years and have specific traits like this. Uh, it doesn't get nearly as many fruit as you would see on many of the cultivated varieties. Well, let's pick some and see how they taste. Here they are. They really are a beautiful fruit, like a blueberry, more toward burgundy and red. And uh, they can move toward purple. None of mine, mine seem to, by the time they get to purple, they're probably overdone at that point. But let's give it a try. There's a, a sweet flavor, maybe a bit of a apple flavor. And there's seeds. And as you chew the seeds, there's kind of an almond flavor that comes out at the end. You don't taste it in the beginning at all. You just have the, the sweet, but then at the end there's really this almondy flavor that comes out that just kind of finishes it off and, and it's just really enjoyable. It's complex. There's just multiple experiences when eating these Juneberries. Now when we think of nutritional powerhouses, people typically think of blueberries, but check this out. When you compare blueberries head to head with Juneberries, you realize who's the true powerhouse. You notice when it comes to protein, they have twice as much protein, they have three times as much iron, they have like seven times the calcium, and they even have over two times the fiber. So overall, these are just intensely nutritious fruit. So these things are just a fantastic fruit to know about. You can find them growing by the side of the road here on my property. It's growing right along my driveway as it heads out, as you head out the gate out of the property. And it's getting some sun this time of day, but it's really under a canopy right here. So they can grow under the can canopy of other trees, but they do best out in, you know, full sun. Now in the United States, there's very few commercial enterprises, farms that are actually growing this. There may be a few in places like Michigan, but when you make your way up to Canada, there's over 3,000 acres that are cultivated on farms, over 900 farmers and they're selling this commercially in Canada, but it's not very popular in the United States. Actually, few people in the U.S. even know what it is. Now, for me, it's, it's just a treat to be able to eat a few of them off the trees that I have or the bushes that I have. But if you have one of the commercial varieties and it's growing well, after about four years, you can expect to get anywhere between five to eight pounds of fruit off your Juneberry tree. Now you may have heard that the Native Americans would actually make something called pemmican. And pemmican was a mixture of meat and fat and various berries that were mixed together and made into kind of a, just a substance that they were able to carry and travel with them and eat. And one of the things that they would use in it was this Juneberry. Although Juneberries are native to North America, to the United States and Canada, they were also native to, at least one variety was native to Northern Europe, and two other species were native to Asia. Now there's a ridiculous number of animals that enjoy these, you know, whether it's raccoons or squirrels, the deer will eat them, and even, uh, probably even your family dog will actually eat these and enjoy them. And when you eat them, you'll know why so many animals enjoy them. 
Right now we have an unbelievable infestation of caterpillars and this is just in the forest this is not simply on my cultivated trees they are on my cultivated trees but just the whether it's the sassafras or the witch hazel or oak trees whatever it is all over the place you're seeing these it is just an unbelievable infestation right now you can hardly tell that this is a sassafras the caterpillars are just decimating it. Now the Native Americans actually use this not only as a food source, but they would use it medicinally. One of the things they would do is they would actually take dried leaves. One of the tribes would take the dried leaves and actually make a tea out of it. They would also use the plant to get rid of worms or parasites. They used it as a cough medicine for toothaches. They would use it as an anti-diarrheal and they would also use the wood to make arrows. So not only do you have a beautiful bloom in the spring with these shad berries, but you also have in the fall this incredible beauty of the leaves turning a bright, beautiful red color. And who doesn't love seeing that in the fall season? Now the truth is, is that they don't last very long. So berries, blueberries might last a bit longer, but when it comes to these, you're going to either want to dry them or freeze them because when, when the season comes, you'll see them starting to ripen. And number one, if you don't get them early enough, probably the birds are gonna take them off before you do. So even picking them just slightly early, they still taste good. Uh, but if you wait too long, they also can kind of just rot on the bush very quickly. So taking them off, either freezing them, dehydrating them, or like I said, you could turn them into a preserve or something else. Put them into your, you know, blueberry type muffins, Juneberry muffins. You could throw them in your oatmeal or, or your granola or whatever it is. But these are just an incredible fruit to eat. And since they're so packed with nutrition, these are something that the kids actually, they've done taste tests. and. They found that typically men, you know, youngish men are the ones who like them the least, but almost everybody else, children love them. Children actually like them more than just about anybody. So that's great news for parents. And as people get older, they, the women are absolutely in love with them. They truly enjoy them. I, I don't understand how somebody couldn't enjoy them. Now, they, they're not quite, at least the ones I've had, are not quite as sweet as a blueberry, but they just have a phenomenal complex flavor. So... Do you enjoy Juneberries, Saskatoons, Shadberries, whatever you call them, wherever you're from? Uh, you know, let us know down in the comments if you have any suggestions, uh, ways to prepare them, how you like to eat them. Maybe share a story about how you gather them. And if you want to learn more about country living, homesteading, growing your own food, and all of these kinds of things, and looking at the actual science behind these things, hit the subscribe button. God bless and have a fantastic day.